In my previous video where I took the Rivian R1T on my road trip range test, I ended up with the battery at 0% and then I drove for an additional mile. So clearly this was the time to test DC fast charging and see exactly how quickly the Rivian will charge from a low state of charge all the way to completely full. I will give you a hint, it is not terribly speedy. Here's how the test went down. I arrived at my office from that road trip range test with a zero indicator on the battery meter, zero miles left, and then I drove another mile after it said zero. So it was well and truly down there at the bottom. In order to get to the DC fast charge station, I had to plug it in. So I let it charge at 11 kW all the way up to about 8%. It didn't really take that long, to be perfectly honest. It was only about uh, 30 minutes or so, something like that. After it hit 8% battery state of charge, I then typed in the destination for the DC fast charger into the factory nav in the R1T so it would precondition the battery. The R1T does have dynamic preconditioning, and when the battery gets low, if you have a destination set in place, it will start preconditioning the battery for you. With the preconditioning consuming the battery, I arrived at the DC fast charge station at 4%, and that's where I plugged in. So let's just roll through the numbers and the footage here. The big thing you'll notice is that the charging spiked right away. So the vehicle goes all the way up to 195 kW, basically right upon plugging it in. Now, this Rivian R1T has the latest software as of July 11th. That bumped the maximum charge rate or maximum current, I should say, pulled down from the DC fast charge station up to theoretically 500 amps. Of course, a lot of things have to align in order to get that maximum current from the charge station. Now, I was at an EVgo charge station because these stations do support that maximum charge current, and not all of the charging stations you'll find out there do. A lot of the 350 kW stations, for instance, from Electrify America, they don't really go up there all the way to 500 amps. That has been a common complaint, which is why I use EVgo for my testing, but on road trips I generally use EA because they're a lot easier. Now the next thing you'll know about this charge curve is that it is kind of wacky. As we get around to about 23 or so percent state of charge, you'll notice that the charge curve absolutely plummets all the way down to somewhere around 62 to 63 kW. There were some various messages going on on the instrument cluster and some of them didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Some of them were saying the battery needed to cool down. Now that made a lot of sense because at 500 amps you're trying to jam a lot of current into the pack and that could account for some of the slower charging that we're seeing here. The other thing that the car occasionally said was that the station was not delivering the power that the vehicle was requesting. I found that a little bit difficult to believe, although it is possible that the station maybe was not actually giving us 500 amps, maybe it was limited to about 450 amps, something along those lines. Rivian does say that the maximum charge rate on the R1T is now about 220 kW, and my peak was about 210. So it is possible that there was just a teeny tiny little bit of limitation going on there. So when I talk at the end of the video about the charging times, keep in mind, it is theoretically possible that the R1T could go just a hair faster. Because the R1T is already hitting around a 500 amp draw from the DC fast charge station, it is unlikely that future software updates are ever going to change the peak charge rate on the R1T because it is voltage and current based. And the limiter here in this instance is the current. If the pack had a higher nominal charging voltage, it could go a little bit faster. If the battery pack charged at say 550 volts, then you could get probably 250, 260 kW peak charge rates on a similar battery pack and still be a 400 volt based system. But for this pack design to get to the next level, Rivian is likely going to have to move towards the 800 volt direction or have a major redesign of the battery pack and its operating and charging voltages in order to get those higher charge rates. Now, Rivian has said that they are working on an 800 volt system and I wouldn't be surprised if relatively soon, Rivian announced that some later date, the R1T was going to get that particular update and then charge at faster rates. That's exactly why we see faster charging in something like a Porsche a Taycan, it's because it has those higher voltages and it's a little bit easier to support those peak charging rates even on EA stations that have trouble delivering the maximum 500 amps. The other thing you'll notice is that we also had a pretty significant dip for some particular reason right in the middle of the charging cycle. That one was really peculiar because it went all the way down to 4kW not entirely clear what was going on there. Some of these charging dips, they don't really make sense in the context of battery cooling. It was a pretty mild day outside. It was about 70 degrees or so, so the air conditioning shouldn't really have had too much trouble cooling the battery. And then the charging rate popped right back up pretty high, actually higher than it had been before, really immediately. It's not like it hung out down there at 4kW for very long. 
That's also the same thing that went on in the earlier charging dips. It doesn't dip for very long. It just sort of dips down, and then about 30 seconds later, it pops right back up. So these charging dips are really peculiar. It's odd that it's not more of a shallow dive along these charging dips there. Now, the other thing to know in these numbers is that right around 88% the charging session timed out because one hour is what it took from 4% to 88% and one hour is the maximum you could be connected to an EVgo station. I then had to initiate another session to go 88% all the way to 100. So let's dive through the charging rates here. From 10% to 50%, that was the fastest charging window, 154kW average. 10% to 80%, it averaged 137kW. That's a pretty respectable charge rate, to be honest. The thing to know, however, is that the Rivian's battery is pretty big. Its usable capacity is around 128 or just over kilowatt hours. The total capacity is around 135 kilowatt hours. So we're talking about a big battery pack. This is 35% larger approximately than the largest Tesla battery pack. It's about double the battery pack in an EV6 or an IC5 or a base model 3, something along those lines. So charging definitely takes longer here. If you want to go from 4% where we did all the way up to 100%, that average charge rate was about 120 KW, it'd be pretty similar to go from 1% all the way to 100%. Now, all the way to 100% is theoretically rare for an EV, but I did it in the Rivian for an important reason. This is a pickup truck, and theoretically, it's meant to tow. And because towing is really going to reduce your range and drastically reduce your efficiency, you could logically expect less than half the range that you would get when driving it normally. A lot of folks are going to need to charge all the way to 100% in order to get to their next destination. So if you have a trailer connected and your range is about 100 to 150 miles, depending on your trailer, the distance between EA stations can be around 100 to 150 miles on the open highway. So you are going to need to get all the way full, drive it almost all the way empty in order to get there. And if that describes your situation, you should know that from 4% to 100% took an hour and 39 minutes. Based on my estimates, going from 0% all the way to 100% would likely take about an hour and 45 minutes. Now the 10% to 80% window is pretty similar to Rivian's claims. That took 45 minutes exactly according to my testing here. But if you want that extra 30% of the battery, the 10% on the bottom, the 20% on the top, that is going to take considerably longer rate is going to be a little bit lower. It's not over 200 kW. And Ford has been really conservative about battery charge rates, especially over 80%, where the R1T was actually charging relatively rapidly. In fact, the R1T all the way up to 99% was still charging faster on the DC station than it would be able to on the AC charger. So there was no advantage to unplugging and plugging into AC. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comments section. Be sure and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Find us at all the social media channels. And of course, check out the related Rivian content on the channel as well. I'll see all of you later.